Tyler Elligard's with us, Portfolio Manager at Gradient Investments. Thank you for being with us. How are you feeling Thanks, about earnings season? You know, we'll hear from a lot of the banks on Friday. We already got in some Delta news, which actually Delta soared prior to the, um, to, prior to the CPI. But some of your thoughts on earnings season. Yeah, look, it's 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 going to be closely watched. Obviously, today having the CPI print come in a little bit higher, and and what the implications of that for the Federal Reserve, um, and and the potential rate cuts. I think people are going to be really eyeing earnings season this or this current earnings season, um, because it's going to give us a, a good indication of how strong is the consumer and and how well are they taking on these these rate hikes that we've had for some time now. Um, and it, it'll it'll give us a general sense of how well the economy is is moving along because you know the the economy is really driven on that consumer. So it's it's going to be a very important time. Um, you know we're we're going to be watching financials heavily to to understand what the net interest margins are looking like um, and and how well uh, the banks are coping with some of the stresses that we are starting to see on the consumer. I know you know um, and that's a good point that you make, because once we hear from them, we'll see more on that. You know, some of the earnings numbers were taken down. I think um, when I ask sometimes, are the earnings estimates too frothy, too low? People seem to feel that they're they're good where they are. So now, you know, do you feel like we're in a good place, sort of where we're at pertaining to earnings? Yeah, I think as, for the market as a whole, I, I do think Earnings expectations are a little bit frothy. Um, you know, the the consensus estimate for the S and P this year is about 12 percent growth. We think we'll come in right around the high single digits, maybe eight nine percent. So we do think we have to tailor back some of our expectations um, because we do feel that consumer is starting to get stretched. So from from a general market perspective, frothy. But then when you start to dig into some of the companies, you know, there's there still is plenty of opportunity for for companies with their earnings growth, depending on where you're looking. Um, so it, it gives us some hope. But, yes, we, we do feel that it's a little bit frothy at the at the moment. Yeah. And when you go about stock picks, you know, I see a few that, that you have here. What are you looking for? Is it a is it a segment? Is it um just a, a fundamental story about a particular stock. I mean, do you think energy, for example, I know you have Schlumberger on there, um, will do better? Yeah, it, it's really on a case by case basis and, and getting into the fundamental story of the company. And so for, for us, there are some sectors that we prefer over others um, or even certain industries over others within certain sectors. Uh, but I, I think generally speaking with, with where geopolitical risk is right now, um, I think energy is is an interesting play, and now today having the CPI print come in hotter, um, it, commodities could could have their rally like they had back in 2022. Um, so Schlumberger is is kind of my my top energy pick at the moment. Um, their their capability with their EBITDA growth and and margin expansion um, is really being driven by their digital and integration unit. Um, as, as well as some of their, their cost reducing efforts. Um, you know, we're kind of getting into that story across the board for a lot of companies, but uh, I think their ability to execute on that will be strong. And so for us, you know, when you look at Schlumberger, they're not just a, a US based company, right? They have significant exposure overseas and on an on a international upcycle in CapEx, Schlumberger has the most exposure versus its peers. And so from that standpoint, we think they can deliver, you know, low teens growth on EBITDA and, and mid teen growth on EPS for the next several years. And and we've heard that from the, the management team uh, on the last couple of earnings calls. They're, they're quite positive. Um, and so for us, it's it's something that we think you could be a buyer here. The stock really hasn't gone anywhere for some time. Yes, it's had its ups and downs. But I think this is a good entry point. And when you look at the valuation of the company on the fundamentals, uh, it, it's screening quite cheap at the, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been running up a little bit, let's say since February, it's off its highs. But um, to your point, you know, 
definitely 62 was the high that we saw in September. And with energy maybe picking up, I see where you're coming from with that. What about Dexcom? We think about medical devices, is healthcare. So you do like energy, let's say overall, Schlumberger being yep. your pick. Um, when you think about healthcare, is it pharma, is it medical devices, and something special about Dexcom, obviously? Yeah, medical devices specifically, but we do like healthcare in general. Uh, you know, it's it's generally lagged the market over the last year, year and a half. So we, we do like healthcare, um, the UNHs, the Abbotts, the, the Medtronics, but specifically for me, Dexcom is, is one that really stands out. Their, their, their ability to innovate products for the diabetes community and, and even the health conscious community at this point, we've seen a, a big transition to, to health conscious people using uh, the products. But I think the big story here, and, and, and when we saw that big decline uh, about six months ago was was the GLP-1 story, right? And and I still think despite the run that the stock has had, I still think people are cautiously optimistic about this name. Uh, but this is one that I'd be pounding the table on because GLP-1s I don't think will give much effect to Dexcom and, and the potential growth that they have simply because GLP-1s aren't going to change people's diets. Yes, it might help them lose some weight along the way, but they're still going to need products like Dexcom um, to, to continue monitoring their glucose levels and their total addressable market will continue to grow when, as they continue to expand globally. It's not just fo U.S. focused. U.S. is one of their largest markets at, at, the, at the moment. But as they continue to expand internationally, that, that gives them some pretty significant top line growth. And if they can maintain margins, uh, G, their G7 product was a, a concern for some time uh, in the last last quarter. But you know, I think as as mm -hmm. that product continues to roll out, there's there's higher adoption for the G7. Right. Uh, margins won't be as big of a concern, so they can continue to grow their EPS right. at at quite a significant rate. Yeah, yeah. And then when it comes to CRH, we look to materials. And this is a name that actually has had a lot of demand and has been running up mm -hmm. to new highs um, over one year, up at almost 75%. Um, still some room to the upside for this one? I think there is. You know, they've had a small pullback here. But when you look at the, the U.S. infrastructure bill, 300 plus billion dollars is dedicated to, to roads and bridges. And, and this is really where CRH plays. You know, they're, they're a cement, ready mix cement, asphalt, uh, asphalt service company. And so that 300 billion, it gives them a, a, a pretty strong baseline growth number for their, for their sales for the foreseeable future. And so if they can continue their, their ability to pass through price increases while maintaining, you know, their cost, it's a it's a pretty good margin expansion story. And then when you also think about their ability to buy back stock, um, the management team has has spoke is is focusing on uh, returning thirty five billion dollars one way or another. Um, so whether they're going to continue showing up their balance sheet uh, or m and a or in buybacks. Um, and so that that gives us a good indication of 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 how strong the management feels about their prospects going forward. And so, yes, it has run up quite significantly, 75% over the last year. But I still think on this little little dip here, I think you could start adding some money back to it. Tyler, thank you so much for being on today and for the names for that uh, you selected that we can, we can watch those as well. Tyler Eligar, thank you at Gradient Investments.